Hello everyone and welcome to this Selenium with Python series. In this particular tutorial, we will learn to automate the login functionality. So let's begin. In our previous tutorials, we learned about the elements, locators, and we also learned about a very good extension known as selector subs to locate the element. Now, if we talk about different web applications nowadays, and most of those web applications have the login functionality. So in this particular tutorial, let's see how to automate our login functionality here. So uh, let me go here and let me create one new file, Python file here, and I'm naming it as login. Okay. And uh, for this particular tutorial, I will be using this source demo website. And let me go to the browser here and let me open this one. So as soon as you land on this one, so you see that we need to provide the username, we need to provide the password. So in order to log into this particular application. So for example, this is they have provided some uh, you know the demo users here, and I'm providing the username and password here, and I'm logging. So this is basically a e-commerce website, demo e-commerce, where you can add the products, remove the products. But in order to go through this website, we need to log it into this application first. Okay, so in most of the applications, you will be finding this functionality, right? So now what we need to do is that we need to learn how to automate this login functionality. Okay. So uh, simply let's go to the PyCharm here and let me copy a few lines of code from our previous tutorial. Let me paste it here. Now the first thing is that we know that in order to work with the, you know, opening the website, we need to use this get method. And now uh, if I will go here and let me provide this URL. Let me copy this one and go back here and provide this one here. Okay. Now, once we have this one, I'm not just, you know, automating this one, but I will also share some best practices. Okay. So if we go to this particular website here, so we know that we need to provide the username and we need to provide the password. And we know the values as well. Okay. So first thing what I will do is that I will create the variables for these ones. Okay. So username. Okay. And the value of username. Similarly, for password, I am creating a variable for the password. Now go here and let me copy the username from here. And this is here we need to paste it now go back here again and now copy this one and go back here and paste this one here now we have defined our username password into the variables and these variables are basically username and password in a similar way what i will do is that i will create a login underscore url okay and i will provide the url so you all know this. So let me copy this one from here and paste here. Now, as you saw that, uh, I'm not using directly in this one. So I don't need this line from here. Okay. And let me go here. So I have created three variables, two for the username and password and one for the URL. So now in order to, you know, use or open the URL simply driver dot get right and inside that i will not be providing the complete url and in some cases the url is big enough so you know that's the better way to save it in our variable and then pass the variable here okay and now uh what i will do is that i need to find the fields i need to locate the username and password field and again the practice is that i will be creating uh you know variables and here again driver dot find element and if i go here let me see go here right click here and here you see that we have the id here as well so let me go with the id copy this one and let me go back here and so by dot id and the value of ID. Now I have saved this value in this variable. Tomorrow 
if I need to perform different and multiple actions, so I'll just call this one. I will call the variable and with this variable, I will be using the particular actions. In a similar way, uh, let me go here and let me copy the complete line of the code from here. And instead of here, so instead of this one, so now I need to identify or locate the password field. Okay. And let me go back here and let me inspect this password field. And again, here we have ID. Let me copy this one and go back here. And the ID is here. Now, what I need to do here, I need to provide the username in this particular field. And here I have located, okay, and save this value in this variable, which is known as username underscore field. So, in order to use this one, username underscore field, and using the send keys, I will be, you know, typing a text. And here, there are two ways. Either I can, you know, just go here and actually provide a username and password, but we will not do this thing. We will not do any hard coded things here. Tomorrow, if there's any change in the username and password, okay, so I will just go here and change it. So that's why we have created the username here and I'm passing the username here. Again, let me copy this one and paste this one here and here we'll be passing the password. Okay, so because this variable has this value and again, this username has this value. Okay, so here we have done this one. Now, in a similar way, what I'll do is that I will be creating a locator and I will saving it in a variable for the login button. Okay, so I am doing it as login underscore button and again driver dot find element by dot go here. And let me inspect this login button and yes we have this id here let's go with the id and by dot id and the value of the id here and now in order to click on this one simply what i'll do is that i will use login button dot click and that's it so that's just how and tomorrow if you want to perform more actions around the buttons or the fields or the links or any web elements so this approach will be very very good because it will optimize your code and it will be more efficient way okay now what i need to do is that i need to assert because this script will simply go and provide the username and password and click on the login button but this is not sufficient we are the purpose of automation is to test the functionality of the application. Okay. So how we will make sure that our script is working fine and is testing it properly. So we need assertions here. Okay. And the first assertion, uh, assertion is that before clicking on this button, I need to ensure that this button is not disabled. It should be enabled because when the button is disabled, you cannot click on it. Right. So my so assert not login underscore login underscore not here this is before clicking so assert assert login underscore button okay and I need to get the attribute because these buttons will only be disabled if the element has a attribute with the value disabled. Okay, so if I go here and let's suppose because this type, this class, this name, these are the attributes and they have their respective values here. So if someone wants to disable this one, they, they will be using this disable attribute to disable this one. Okay, so let me go back here. So here, what I'll say, the property disable. Okay, so basically, I'm asserting that login button dot get attribute is not equals to display. So for, for not, 
simply go ahead and type not. So we are setting that this login button is should not be disabled. And how we are verifying this one? We are simply getting the attribute of the web element and we are saying that it should not be disabled. And that's simple. And now how we know that we have successfully logged in into the application. Okay. So if I go back here and if I provide this new and password here, right here, go here and provide this one. Go here, provide this one. Okay. So as soon as we logged in, so usually you will find a different messages welcome to this dashboard uh, or some kind of information you will get. And here, for example, this product. Okay. So if I assert that if we got this product text here, then we assume that our script has successfully logged in. Right. But this is not limited to this one. You can assert any element here, which will make you ensure that your user have actually logged in using the script. So that's the idea. So simply, uh, what I'll do is that I'll go here and here. I will go here. I'm creating one more variable. So I'm calling it as success element or the logged in element and then driver dot find element. And here, if I go here, so let's go with this one. So as you know that we have installed the structures up and we have the relative CSS available with this one from here and now provide here so by dot css and the value of this one okay now we have uh we have located the element now it's time to assert the value so assert so success element and now success element if you want a text from this particular web element so simply type dot text so this will actually give us because this has the element because we have located using this one. So this variable has this locator, right? So we in order to get a text from the locator, you can simply type here the variable name dot text. It will give us a text. So simply now we will assert this value and we will say it should be products. Okay. So I am giving double S just to see how it works because it will make you understand how the things will fail or how the things will pass you. Okay, so let me uh, run this one here and see what happens here. So it should be going to the website. It should be providing username and password and logging this one and also the it is it should asserting. Now here you see that um, we have unfortunately typed into the you know username field. So if I go here in my script, so we have this username, we have this password, we have located these two separate me. So let's look into the error here. So unable to locate the element. Uh, okay, that is fine because it haven't reached to this point because if we go here, you see that it's provided both username and password here. Again, username should be provided here and password should be provided here, right? So let's see here. So what is the problem? Simply, if I go here and let me look into the code. So our username is this value. Our password has this value. That's correct, right? Now element. Oh. So the problem here is that we are using with the username dot field and we need to go with this one. Right? So we go here and provide this one. Now it should work. So whenever you face any problems, just try to resolve those problems and you know that's easy. You need to try to understand what is the problem. Now you see that we have successfully logged in into the page and our uh, uh, you know script is got executed successfully here. So simply here. But here you see this, we got a session error because we are expecting products which is not equal to the products. That's why we are getting this assertion error here. Okay. Now let me close these ones. And if I go back here, so it's simply products with the capital P. So simply if I go here 
I remove the S here. Now, if I run this one, so you will see that it will be logging in successfully and this time there will be no session errors here. So the execution was really fast here and if we go here, you will see that we have no session error here. So in this way, you can, you know, automate the login functionality. Again, this is the, the linear way. In our upcoming sessions, uh, first we will learn the basics and foundations in this uh, series. But after that, we will be converting this thing into a different frameworks where we will be where actually we will not be writing the linear schemes. We will be writing the code in such a way that it can be optimized. It can be reusable. So we'll be using the frameworks in that particular case. But right now, just to quickly start the things, this is a very good way to start learning a single with Python. And that's how you can automate the login functionality here. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. If you like our content, then do like, comment, share and subscribe our channel. Once again, thank you so much and see you in the next tutorial.